What's going on my fellow watch kings and queens? For today's episode, let's talk about some underdogs from Seiko. I like to consider myself somewhat knowledgeable about what's popular in the mid-tier watch community, and from my observation, the only Seikos you ever really hear about are the SKX, the Sports, the Tuna, Turtle, Samurai, the Arnie every now and then, and the Monster here and there, and also the Willard. And while I think they're all great, I wanted to bring up two Seikos in my collection that I don't ever hear being brought up in discussion, despite how fantastic they are. For those of you new to my channel, one thing to remember is that I only like to cover watches that I own in my personal collection. So if you don't agree with my selections, that's fine. I am just sharing my own personal thoughts here. So without further ado, let's get right into it. How the Baby Tuna got the nickname Baby Tuna has intrigued me, because to me there was never anything baby-like about it, even if it was the younger brother to the original Marine Master Tuna. If anything, my initial reaction when I first received it was that it appeared even more serious than its older brother. I felt that the SRP637 was underreported amongst us fellow Seiko addicts and is one that should be sought after much more than any overpriced SKX. There's nothing crazy about the internals here, as it comes with the 4R36 movement, or NH36 for you homogeholics. But the fact that you could get a genuine Seiko with tuna genetics in an automatic movement was and still is awesome. Nothing against quartz, but if you're going to ask me, automatic is the way to go. That's just the way I feel about that. Everything else is pretty standard Seiko affair, which is good nonetheless. The Lumabrite is outstanding, ISO 6425 diver certification is always welcome, and the Hardlex crystal does what it needs to do. All of those specs are great, but not why I'm featuring this watch in today's episode. The Grand Slam home run appeal here is the steel bezel and shroud combo. The all steel tone look is a design choice that I think is criminally underused and one that should be featured more. Everything about that style screams machine to me and the brush finished shroud beautifully completes the whole package. The minute text that accompanies each indice along with the optical character recognition font along the bezel also plays into the professional look, making the SRP637 a great ambassador to the Prospects family. Those of you new to Seiko, or watches in general, Prospects stands for Professional Specifications, and I truly believe this tuna fully lives up to that name. The next Seiko is actually the star of this entire episode, and also the main inspiration for it. This is one that you really don't hear about too often, and it's a crying shame. Let's take a moment to simply bask in all the Couture's beauty. Number one, two-tone is freaking beautiful. And number two, two-tone with a blue dial is even more freaking beautiful. And we're not just talking about some plain Jane blue dial either. We're talking about a sunburst azure admiral blue paired with the feather pattern in the center and it all plays with the light in one direction while the gold tone indices reflect in another, making the Kutura experience just an optical symphony that you don't find on any other watch in this price range. Moving outward of the dial, just like with the Baby Tuna, the bezel area has the fantastic brush finish that belongs on every watch, but with the gold accents right at the very edge. And when you think you can't handle any more beauty, if you look at the crown, you'll notice they even added a cobblestone gemstone, and then you can only conclude that this watch is simply too good for this world. We're not worthy! We're not and it's no chump in the technical specs department either. It's solar, atomic, has world time, dual time, 100 meters water resistance, and a sapphire crystal. Another thing that I want to make mention of is the case back. 
I've never seen anything like this on a Seiko, but it's simply what appears to be a crystal case back with only the word Seiko in the center. How elegant is that? For me, what makes me smile so much is that the Kutura kind of has all the design features of a gaudy pimp watch, and yet it's all crammed inside a subtle Japanese case, making it something truly unique in a loudly quiet, gaudy, elegant way. Seiko has had its bad rap in the watch community with quality control, but not all Seikos were built equally. And I can tell you that this Kutura is a cut above your typical hype train Seiko. If someone were to ask me what's the nicest Seiko I've ever owned, without skipping a beat, I would say this one. So what do you guys think? Agree? Disagree? Of course everyone has different watch groups and cliques that they're in, so maybe in your group these two watches are actually quite popular. I know for me they are never discussed when I can't help but feel like they are objectively fantastic watches. In a way, I like that because it allows me to have something unique, and when I do come across a fellow watch enthusiast with the same watch, I know that our watch tastes share a wavelength on a deeper level than just your standard interest from popular media. But that's about it for now. I hope that if anything, I was able to introduce some great Seikos to you and that you enjoyed today's episode. I always have a blast making them and appreciate your presence here. So as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Bye.